Welcome to the workshop. The bandsaw suddenly excels with freehand cutting. Even with a half inch blade like this, you can still cut quite tight curves. Having drawn your line that you wish to copy, you simply feed the blade in and guide the work through the same as you would on a scroll saw and practice is probably the best way to get good at this. And we can cut quite interesting shapes that way. For accurate cross cutting, attach a fence to your mitre gauge, either with screws or clamps as I've done here. Extend it so it's further than the blade and then cut off the excess at your blade. This now means that the end of your fence is exactly where the blade is going to cut. To cross cut our piece of work to this exact line here, place that line right at the end of the fence, add a stop block at the end to prevent it moving. and then we can cut. And we have a perfect cut just at the angle we were looking for. If we were to measure our component and find we needed to take a little bit more off Leave a stop block where it is and simply insert a paper shim between the stop block and the work, close the gap up and cut again. You can remove a tiny amount of material by just inserting a single paper shim and if you're still short of the mark you can add some more shims. Better to start cutting a little bit long and to reduce the length than to cut too much off to begin with. To cut to width, for example to here, we've already set our fence for the drift angle of the blade. So we simply move up close to our line lock the fence and take a little cut. Now we can adjust our fence very slightly just to bring it exactly to where we want it. That's perfect. But for more precision, you can insert a 
parallel spacer next to your fence. Move the fence further away. Set up your work so that you're cutting shy of the line by perhaps a 30 second. Lock your fence. Take a cut. And I see I'm short of the line. So then I need to take a paper spacer. I think we're probably two or three spaces, widths of paper away from what we need. So I put a couple at that end of the fence and a couple at this end and cut again. And we want to take a little bit more off so let's put some more spaces at that end and two more at this end and that's right on the line so we can go ahead and cut to width So we can accurately cut to width and to length. By using what is known as a point fence, it's very easy to copy a previously cut curve. We simply track the curve against the point of the point fence and pass it through the blade. The distance between the point fence and the blade determines the thickness of the copy. If you wish to cut veneers from a piece of wood that is higher than your fence, it's probably best to add an auxiliary fence so that you have support further up. This can be plywood, or a piece of hardwood. Depending on how long your stock is, you may need to recess some bolts and bolt it through your fence rather than clamping as I'm doing here. As you'll find the clamp heads could get in the way. In this case, I can cut all the way through before I hit my clamps. Set your fence to the width of the veneer you're hoping to achieve. Check that the auxiliary fence is perpendicular to the table. Plane the edge of your stock first of all on one side. That will be the top side of your finished veneer. And then cut with a slow rate of feed. The best blade for this will be a hook tooth blade with perhaps three or maybe four teeth per inch.
have a veneer in the order of about a 64th of an inch. If we wanted another one, we would plane this surface and cut again. I learnt this little trick from Michael Dunbar. almost requires no sanding as well and you could continue that cut all the way around and pull a cone out if you wanted so whether you're cutting curves very tight curves cones or veneers or little intricate figures the bandsaw can do it all <laughs> 